Okay, Kira. Welcome everybody to another one of our 90 for Life uh, memorable moments. Um, my name is Kevin Grundy. Uh, I'm a member of the New Zealand Association of Medical Herbalists. I am a member of the American Herbalist Guide Guild. I specialize in Western herbal medicine, natural and nutritional health. And I'm a young ja, young Jevity three star executive. And more importantly, the part I really enjoy, the lifestyle that goes with it, and I'm an independent distributor. That means I'm not accountable to corporate for anything I do um, other than spreading the good name. So today we're going to talk about kidney health. Um, it's been a topic that comes up regularly. Uh, kidney health is connected to many other cross health problems. But today I just wanted to focus purely on the kidney side of the health. We're also going to be talking about the aromatherapy of the month. And of course, we always uh, run a month behind to give you guys a chance to uh, get the oils, get to smell them, get to use them. And so you can have them in your hand while we do this talk. And so today's uh, uh, talk, August, is Mum to the Rescue. Dun, 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 dun. And we're going to be talking about uh, rose uh, geranium, uh, eucalyptus uh, radiata, and lavender and chamomile. So we talk about that at the end and we have the, the lovely uh, Sally, Karen and Sam to um, bring all that information to us. So like always, the message is pretty clear. There are three steps to better health. These are steps that Dr. Wallach has developed over the years and these steps work. These steps we've incorporated into our medical practice here in New Zealand and we get an amazing results over and above what we would normally get using natural medicines. So remember your first steps. We identify the category, we use the appropriate packs and doses. Remember guys, it's important that we understand dosing. If anybody's ever made contact with Dr. Wallach, anybody who's used Dr. Wallach's raw protocols, you will notice that he pushes um, the therapeutic dosing of products. Okay, so if you've got a health challenge, you push your therapeutic dosing, that is your maintenance dose times two or three or four if you're on um, death's door. Okay, so uh, understanding dosing is very important when it comes to using supplements as a medicine. And I've got many talks based around that. And of course, step three, we need to clean up one's lifestyle, clean up one's diet, make better decisions of what we're going to consume. We make great decisions of how we look after our animals, even to the extent how we look after our vehicles or our boat. We need to start making those decisions for ourselves as well. We need to eat better, eliminate foods that create inflammation in the body. These are problematic foods. We need to get, we need to get out and do stuff. We need exercise. Exercise creates um, circulation movement in our body it keeps the heart going, the heart pumps faster, and with circulation moving, we feed the peripherals of our body, those toes, those ears, those nose, all those far places require feeding as well, and that's where circulation and uh, exercise come into it. And importantly, sleep. Sleep is the recharge. Sleep is when we, the body is able to stop processing uh, stop using processes that it needs to during the day, the muscles, um, the, the memory, and focus its processes on healing and digestion. So we need to sleep. We need you know, a good seven plus hours a, a day of sleep to catch up and recharge. And of course, we need to support, support everything, support other people, um, support yourself in a better way. This is the, the basic, this is the backbone of Dr. Wallach's philosophy. If you just use these three steps, you don't need us, you don't need me, you don't need Sally, you don't need Doc. We just use these simple protocols and you watch your health change. So just quickly, just to recap, because this is a very important form. You know, we need to identify the people's needs and the problems they have. And we need to do it in such a way that we can understand and follow and go forward. And so there's many forms out there and they give, give you a number like one to five or good, medium, bad, but that's very hard to sort of judge in long term going forward. So we use the system 0 to 10. 
because it gives us a better expansion of how we are improving ourselves. So remember that, not to 10. Use this form, it's available for, from, from us. It's been out for a long time now. You can get it from Longevity. Work your category, fill it out, keep on top of this, you'll know which program to go with. We clean up the diet, make better decisions. We need to make better decisions. Wheat, barley, rye, oats, that's gluten, that's your porridge. Okay, we've got to get it out of our system because it creates inflammation. That silence inflammation that um, we don't see, but we are, we do feel long term. You know that the trans fats in the in the bottle, nitrates. My pet pet hate nitrates. We do not need nitrates in our meats today. Yeah, maybe fifty, a hundred years ago when hygiene hygiene was very poor. But today we have health um, and safety standards within our businesses. We do not need nitrates in our meats. Okay, all nitrates do is kill bacteria, and what are we? We're a living cities of bacteria. We need to protect our bacteria, not kill it. And of course, the this, this simple message: we need 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 amino acids, and two to three central fatty acids. That's 90 essential nutrients. And guess what, guys? They come from our Beyond Tangy Tangerine. And just remember, the minerals, our plain minerals, our cherry minerals, our strawberry minerals, our rainforest minerals, carry 60 of these 90. If people say, oh, I don't have the money, oh, where do you start? To me, it's a no-brainer. Buy the minerals, of course, when they're in stock. Okay, so essential nutrients can't be manufactured by the body and deficiencies of the essential nutrients lead to disease. Simple. So where do you start? You start by making better decisions and putting these vital nutrients back. And there are up to 900 nutritional diseases. That's it. If we work on this program, we don't need to worry about the other things I'm about to talk about because we're proactive with our health, not reactive. Okay, let's talk about the reactive part of our health story. Kidney health. You know, kidneys are a big processor in our system. They, they take out of a lot of rubbish. Uh, the kidneys break, uh, sorry, the liver breaks uh, all the, the, the pollutants and all the chemicals down. But it's the kidney's job to, to get all that rubbish out of our blood and get it out of our body. That's its role. So what do we use? We, some interesting facts about kidneys. Yeah, and I, I, when I was doing my kidney homework and all that, just trying to find some fun parts, and I thought some interesting things here. Uh, so kidneys love blood flow. You know, they reabsorb and redistribute 99% of the volume of blood that goes through us. That leaves 1% that turns into urine. So of all that stuff that goes through the system, 1% of it turns into urine. Think about that. Um, it loves so much blood that more blood goes through the kidneys than what does through the brain and the liver. Now, I thought, when I thought that, I thought the liver would be the biggest carrier of blood um, because its main, main role is breaking stuff down. And, um, but no, it's, it's the kidneys. An adult kidney weighs around 142 grams. That's the size of, size of a fist. Uh, and here's something different, you know, the right uh, kidney is usually smaller uh, than, than the left kidney and it's slightly, uh, slightly at a different level or two. I suppose it's making room for that, um, for the liver on that side, isn't it? Uh, and um, we don't need both kidneys, one half the kidney will do and to get full functioning, 75% of one kidney can sustain life, okay? Um, but, you know, so saying that, they say sustain life comfortably. I would challenge the word comfortably there um, because, you know, it does filter out a lot of things and it is a very important uh, organ in our system. If a child was born with one kidney, the other kidney would grow to the same weight and to the, and the same size as two of them put together. Well, isn't that an interesting fact? Because that tells you that we do need this the two for the volume. Otherwise, why would the child, child grow another proportion to it? Hmm. We're pondering on. So kidney disease, what is kidney disease? Well, your kidneys uh, clean your blood by working as a big filter. So um, guys, if you know how an oil filter works in your car or, or the water fil filter works in your home, goes through those membranes and comes out the other side, well, that's what your kidneys do. They work very similar to the, that water filter you have under your bench. 
It removes water and waste from your body. Uh, kidney disease is when these little um, filters, they get damaged and they can't do their job properly. So if you see to the, the graphic on the, the right there, uh, the arrow at number seven, that's your blood flow coming into the kidneys. And see how it goes through this little um, globule? Um, that's separate from the uh, utera. Uh, and so it's sifting through this globule into the utera. Uh, and of course, because it's not connected, the flow of blood continues through. And as you can see, as the oxygen gets taken out of the blood, turns blue, and that re-enters your system again. So here lies the problem. If we see inflammation in and around this module, okay, we're not going to um, filter out the rubbish in our blood. So here lies the, our first problem. We need to get rid of the inflammation uh, from that module and, and um, allow filtration to, ha to happen so it can do its job properly. So when enough of the filters are damaged, the body will fill up with excess waste and excess water. Uh, and this is called kidney failure. Now, some people will know, they'll see it with their ankles. The ankles will swell up like balloons. You press on them and they show, you can see that the, that the imprint just stays there. It's, a, it's um, yeah, it's really nice. It makes your feet really tight. You can't fit your shoes anymore. And look, if it gets so, so, so bad, so severe, the, the cells end up dying. And this is how you lose your feet. Um, gangrene sets in because the cells are dying because they're not getting any more oxygen. Um, and with, with dying cells, you end up with this gangrene. Uh, so it can all happen with kidney disease over a long period of time, chronic Disney kidney disease. So what else is kidney disease? So the two most common causes of kidney disease is di diabetes and high blood pressure because um, they um, create a loading on the kidneys and they damage parts of the kidney. So diabetes, so when your blood sugar rises, it causes damage to many blood vessels in your body, including the blood vessels in your kidneys. About one in three with diabetes will end up with some form of kidney disease. Kidney disease uh, is called a kidney uh, neur neuropathy. <coughs> neuropathy. Pronounce these words better. So, so people get a lot of back pain is a good uh, indication, especially if it's on the sides uh, rather than the center. If it's center, then it's more spinal and more um, um, nerve. If it starts to go to one side, then we're looking more at organs or to third pain from someone. The uh, high blood pressure, high blood pressure damages the small vessels that take the blood to the kidney filter and can also damage the filter themselves. Okay, and so yeah, so very important that we deal with these diseases, we deal with the diabetes before we get kidney disease, we deal with the high blood pressure before we get kidney disease, okay? So other causes of kidney diseases, this next one is definitely a tongue twister. Um, I even tried to put a thing beside it to work it out. Uh, so it's, uh, Glomeriolona frulitos. Glo, put that together. It didn't help. Uh, where's my uncle Google? Anyway, this very long medical word is a group of diseases that affects the filtering units in your kidneys. And those, those little things I showed you back earlier. Uh, polycystic. It's a bit like polycystic fibrosis, but this is polycystic of the kidney. Kidney disease causes cysts, cysts to form in your kidneys. This is an inherent disease, which means that it can be passed down from your parents. Bad parents. You didn't eat well enough. Lupus and other diseases that affect your immune system can also affect your kidneys. Obstructions uh, caused by abdominal-shaped um, things. These are like your kidney stones. Um, it could be a, a mass in there or a large prostate getting pushing um, uh, to the, the walls or pushing to the side so it doesn't allow flow. These can all affect your kidneys. And of course, um, stones I'll talk about later uh, as a biggie because that's where the pain comes from. 
Um, but you know, there are many things uh, obstructing it. It could be, which is what uh, Doc and we all talk about. One of the obstructions, or we see it as the main obstruction, is the inflammation and the cholesterol buildup through the, um, the, the, the arteries of the kidneys. They get inflamed, they don't work properly. They have a cholesterol buildup, fatty, fattiness around them, then they can't filter properly. And so obstruction we see is probably one of the biggest causes or, of kidney problems. And of course, if you get repeated uh, urinary tract infections, uh, can also um, hinder the kidneys. You know, what's causing these ir irritabilities in the urinary? Is it coming from the kidneys or is the uh, urinary affecting the kidneys? You know, one needs to deal with these things, but they do have a big crossover one needs to look at. <clears throat> so kidney stones, well, there, there's, there's one right there. That's what they look like. Look like. Um, they're, they're a hard deposit of minerals. And, uh, and salts uh, that stick together in a concentrated urine or uric acid, we call it. Um, they tend to form because of gravity at the lower peripherals, so your, your, your um, lower parts of your kidneys uh, rather than the upper parts. Um, they're painful uh, when they're passing through the system. So as they go through the kidney, through the urethra, um, that's where the, the, you feel a lot of pain. But when they're actually going through the kidney, it feels like somebody stabbed you in the back. Uh, a lot of people uh, can be mistaken uh, kidney pain as arthritic back pain um, because the two are, are a very similar place. But as I said earlier, if you can just re re sort of focus on, on the pain where it is. If it's centralized, then yes, it is more likely to be spinal and, um, and uh, nerve. But if it's to the side, either one side or to the other side, slightly up, then you're looking more at um, maybe kidney stones. Uh, of course, the most common symptom is severe pain, usually around the abdomen. Um, but look at the size they can get to. You know, um, some of those are five centimeters. Like that's huge. That's large. Um, so, yeah, not very nice. And of course, people can also feel that nausea effect because there's a lot of stuff happening around the abdominals. Um, treatment uh, includes drinking water uh, and helping the pass, uh, help the stones pass. And of course, um, you need to see somebody like uh, Sally or myself or something similar where we can potentially give you a, a herbal formula that's going to help um, remove or break down those stones so they can be passed a little bit easier in the body. So supporting the kidney. So what do we support the kidneys with? Well, we support it obviously with a healthy start pack. We've got the plant-derived minerals, cherry, kiwi, strawberry, etc. We have the ultimate daily classic. Okay, this is not the dailies. This is the ultimate daily classic. Um, so these have great supporting herbs in them uh, that support um, the heart and the kidneys, etc. The niacin plus, we all understand niacin, kidney, bladder from good herbs, uh, the Longevity Nightly Essence, a brilliant product, and the Star Hope. These, this is my arsenal of dealing with kidney issues. Look at these. What are we doing here? We're feeding the system. We're getting it working better. Okay, that's all we're doing. There's no magic bullet here. There's no quick fix drug that's going to quickly fix your kidneys. It doesn't work that way. If you want that system, you go back to your hospital and I'm sure they'll whip it out for you. Okay, so here is how we feed the kidney system in our body. We start with the healthy star pack. Why? Because it carries all of our 90 for life products. We need it. We can't live without it. It is the core of our products. Then we have our minerals. Never go past our minerals. It is 60 of the 90. Everybody should be on minerals when they're in stock. Uh, we have the plain, the cherry, the strawberry, and the rainforest. Rainforest is brilliant because it also has a, a great colon cleanser with it with some great herbs. It's a good immune booster with its minerals and echinacea. I love the rainforest and it's a lovely, refreshing mango flavor. 
And of course, if you're not into the fluids, you've got, say you're on dialysis and you've got to reduce the, uh, the amount of fluid you're, you're taking, um, well then you still need minerals. There's still no reason not to have minerals. Then just use the mineral caps. They can even be opened up and dissolved on the tip of the tongue. And they give like that sherbet sensation, that, mm, that other hot cold on the tip of your tongue. I don't know if anybody's done that experiment with me where I've done that in one of my talks, open the capsule of minerals and put it on your tongue and you get that hot sensation, it's lovely. So yes, the mineral caps, they're, they're there, they're great, a great alternative to the liquid. Um, we've got the daily classic proline. Um, we've talked about this in previous talks, so I'm not gonna go into too much depth. Um, you'll be able to uh, look at this video at the end and go through it uh, at your own leisure. I'll quickly go through it. It is a, a rich uh, array of minerals and vitamins again. Um, this was one of our first products before the Beyond Tangy Tangerine came out. Uh, this was our capsule version of our Tangy Tangerine. Uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's done the test of uh, testimony there and it's a very good product. It includes hawthorn, ginkgo, blue, bilberry. Now, these are great stimulants for, um, for heart. Uh, and for, for kidney function, et cetera, and brain function. Uh, also some key um, ingredients, ACDs, uh, ACD, oh, that's a rock band as well. The magnesium, uh, the coronium, and that, this is thymus gland powder. So it's got thymus gland, and if you understand like feeds like, uh, then the thymus is going to help with our system as well. Uh, then we have the night, the, uh, sorry, the, Niacin Plus, again, I think I've talked about this recently in one of my previous talks. Again, I won't go too deep into it, but uh, what I love about this product, um, it has uh, a great array of um, other things other than just niacin. Uh, it's got some uh, enzymes in there uh, to help clean the stuff. But niacin itself opens capillaries. It opens the pathways. So those um, arteries open slightly and allow more blood to flow. And we need more blood to flow. Remember, we're trying to work with these kidneys. We need the, the nephrons and the gilians and the kidneys. We want them to open because remember they're inflamed or they're clogged. So we need them to open so we can allow food and fluid and enzymes to get through, dissolve whatever's in there and start feeding the kidney. Okay, so very important for that. Um, Ajuna bark, um, just really good for pain, angina pain, hypertension, because remember your kidneys and your heart, your heart pumps fluid through your kidneys. So it's important that we understand the connection between heart, which is your high blood pressure and your kidneys. Hawthorne, another one being used for millennia, um, goes back to the old British school, great um, herb for, for really conditioning the heart, strengthening the heart. It strengthens the heart muscle as well, um, as well as stimulating and many other things. Hawthorne has a very large list of things it's good for. Uh, Natocaselli? 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 Got it. Natocaselli. So Natocaselli is a really great enzyme. This enzyme actually helps eat or dissolves or removes whatever word you wish to use, the rubbish in your arteries. So if you've got plaque buildup in the arteries, this enzyme helps remove it from the wall of the artery. Great product. So you can see how it's really working with the artery. We're opening the artery. We're clearing the rubbish from the artery. You know, a great product, a great enzyme. And it's not just in the nightly and the uh, niacin is also in our nightly essence. I'll talk about that in a few moments. Of course, we can't go without looking at the good herbs, kidney and gallbladder support. I use an array of herbs, all supporting kidney liver function. Helps with the urinary health. So what are these herbs? Dandelion. Cranberry, we'll know some of these. Chamomile, those are the ones you already know. Um, uh, but these other ones, the, the buchi leaf, the jubina berry, these are really great cleansing herbs, getting the, 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 the system flowing and feeding the system. And of course, the, the newcomer to the block, these, the star natural, the hope. Oh, I 
Now, I, we incorporate this in almost all of our um, patients now because this is the one and the real, the real product that we have that deals with kidney health, and uh, sorry, kidney and liver health. But not just that, the herbs you use, you'll see a crossover to many functions in the body. So it's building the immune system. You know, help is a powerful blood cleanser. So it's helping the body purify the blood. And as I read somewhere, a gift from Mother Nature. And it truly is when you see the lineup of herbs in there. Uh, so I did a really good talk on the Star Natural products last month. So if you wish to go back and, and, and look at the in depth of Star Natural, and, and I go quite heavily on the hope, not just the one page I'm doing today, um, but it's a great product. So have a look at that. That's on our YouTube channel. Uh, it's at the moment, that's the Southern Crusaders YouTube channel. You can go and check it out. But anyway, back to the hope. So it helps carry oxygen through the bloodstream. So it's got it helps with particles and nanoparticles, and it helps bring oxygen to where it needs to go. Okay, again, an, an array of herbs. I love looking at these herbs. These these are these are to my heart. They 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 just warm to me because look at them all. Ah, oh, the psyllium husk, the the black walnut, the raspberry leaf for the, for the woman's system. Um, Oh, where else? Uh, magnesium, of course, the coronium. Um, yeah, there's, there's so much stuff in there. There's slippery elm in there, although I can't even see slippery elm in there. No, I still even have, you know, just a great array. It's just, uh, I think it's a must. If you have to have a certain array of, of, of longevity products, um, hope is up there, enzymes is in there, uh, your minerals are in there. These should be your daily intake, adding to your normal healthy start pack. And now the nightly essence. We did a good talk on nightly essence and we did a, a, a newsletter, um, a few newsletters back on nightly essence and the power of nightly essence. Um, it might be uh, up there at the expense of products, but while you get a lot of bang for your buck, it does a lot. So nightly essence contains key enzymes that support a wide range of systems. So it's not just about kidneys as we're talking about today. Like I said earlier, a lot of our products, they cross over to different parts of our body. This one we're talking about kidneys today. So, so nightly essence, it's a blend of cutting edge somatic enzymes along with 14 different strains of probiotics. I repeat, 14 strains of probiotics. Most probiotics out on the market, when I say most, I'd have to probably be bold and say a good 95% on the market, lucky to have three to four strains of, of probiotics. And we know that these bacteria are required to help keep our system healthy. Science now knows that if we lose a particular type of bacteria, a bit like when we lose the dodo bird, the moa, et cetera, uh, it can't come back. And that particular bacteria made enzymes or made secreted stuff that help keep our, our health balanced. When you take that out, the, our health becomes imbalanced. So, we understand the importance of bacteria and man-made bacteria does not fill the gap. All it does is create a bridge until your body can either A, remanufacture the bacteria that's missing, or B, we get some form of intervention and we put some depository back of human um, bacteria so it can recultivate. But I'll tell you now, Man-made probiotics do not recultivate in our body. They just add as a bridge, which is why we must use them consistently. Uh, nightly essence also helps with the production and the utilization of our B vitamins, which is so important because the B vitamins are part of our massive cell development and dividing and growing. We are, you know, so we do so much work with our B vitamins. And here's this enzyme again, this enzymes that help break stuff down. It speeds up the biochemical reaction in our body. Try it. Em nightly essence, you have it at night, like the name says. Have it on an empty tummy, okay? Um, so it, it's allowed to do its job and it can do the healing, healing the stomach lining, healing the intestinal lining as it goes through, building, building new bacteria, new colonies of bacteria, as it helps to bridge your body back into balance. And again, I look at the array of the nutrients involved. Look at all those different types of bacteria. Most of them are a mouthful to pronounce. I'm not going to go there. Um, 
So you can see for yourself a wonderful product. Oh, guys, that uh, brings my talk, um, this part of my talk to an end. So I'd like just to thank you for, for stopping by and, uh, and watching or listening to my talk. Now we're going to roll over to the essential oils. Uh, and today I'd love, like to introduce our three our lovely Down Under girls, Sally Muir, Karen Chilman, and Sam kirkwood Vales. Now they are our longevity specialists in um, our longevity essential oils. All three at the moment are doing a, a certification uh, as aromatherapists. And um, so when they finish this, we'll have our own licensed down under aromatherapist helping us deal with uh, illnesses with oils, with our great longevity oils. So like I said earlier, uh, this month's talk was about uh, mum to the rescue and she's going to come to the rescue with uh, uh, rose, echinacea and our lavender and chamomile. <laughs> it's not for me to pronounce these rose things. Geranium. Yeah, rose geranium. Sally's in the background is giving me a hard time. But it's not for me to talk about these, uh, these <laughs> oils today. Uh, it's, it's there, guys. It's their punch. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Sally. <laughs> um, hi, guys. Okay, I get to talk tonight about lavender and chamomile. Uh, there. So, um, so it's a lavender and chamomile blend. Got a nice bottle. I've been sniffing it while we keep been talking, actually. Maybe that's why I was yawning. Might have been, because it's quite relaxing. Um, so this blend, it's actually, it's used with scarring and restoring of tissue. Um, it is soothing and anti-inflammatory. For children and adults alike, it is sweet, nurturing and calming for stress, tension and insomnia. Relieves spasms, cramps, muscular pain, migraines and teething pain. Excellent for hair, and skin care, including cradle cap, burns, dermatitis, ulcers, and wounds. It relieves digestive upsets and colic. Um, talking of teething, now how did it go? So you use um, 60 mils of um, a carrier oil, so that could be grapeseed, it could be avocado, it doesn't really matter, um, as long as it's a nice clean oil, although Dr. Warwick doesn't really see, but it's a carrier oil. And you put six drops, um, chamomile, Roman chamomile and lavender into it. Um, shake it up a uh, hundred times, so it's well and truly mixed. Then pop your finger in it, and, um, and, and that can go the inside of a baby's mouth if they're teething, and so that'll help for teething. That's um, Leanne's favorite essential oil mix for, for um, teething. Um, so with um, each essential oil, it has key emotions. Um, part of feeling better is, is, or feeling well, it is feeling better. And part of feeling better is, is, is feeling well within yourself. So the key emotions for lavender and chamomile, when they're blended together, are soothing, capable, determined, faithful, and wonderment. Um, these key emotions are what make it so, so um, lovely for children, um, especially the wonderment. Um, kids need to be kept wondering, um, which keeps them as children, especially with the stress around at this point in time. The key body systems that lavender and chamomile blend helps with are the nervous, um, endocrine and integumentary or your skin. The ingredients, yes, is Roman chamomile and French lavender, um, which is the Vera. Um, so French lavender is a little bit different to the um, Maliette, lavender Maliette that we usually use. Um, it's grown at higher altitudes and distilled at lower temperatures than other lavenders. It is also called true lavender or fine lavender. It has a slightly higher ester content, making it excellent, an excellent choice for skin and hair care. Of all lavender species, lavender vera has the highest lindaloo Linaloo content. Linaloo provides its sweet, fresh aroma and stress-reducing effect. 
A recent study in Japan noted that there were changes in expression of over 100 genes related to stress response after inhalation of this oil. It has also been the subject of anti-cancer studies. Um, so the other um, oil in here is the Roman chamomile. So Roman chamomile is a digestive stimulant. It eases stomach pains and intestinal spasms. It's also popular in teas. Uh, it reduces fevers with teething babies and young children. It aids in gingivitis and abscesses. It aids in healing the muscular skin, digestive, hormonal, and emotional systems. It can relieve the systems of arthritis, inflamed muscles and joints, sprains, rheumatism, and gout. It is also beneficial for migraine, low backache, muscular spasms, or menstrual cramps. It helps to ease frustration or anger. It relieves anxiety and depression. So yeah, it's got a lot of uses, um, particularly around mus muscular spasms. So you can either use it where needed, um, when mixed with a carrier oil or on the bottom of your feet. Um, a safety note is do not use if pregnant, as chamomile is a hormone balancing quality, which um, is dangerous. You do not want to be balancing your hormones when you're pregnant. Use um, also, there's a caution for uh, individuals with ragweed, ragweed allergies. So I think that that's like um, ribwort, I think. Oh, and I've got a recipe for cleaning wipes. So you can make your own um, baby wipes. Um, we'll, pro we'll put that up on the um, on our face, uh, not our Facebook group, our um, WhatsApp group, if you wish to try and make it. Um, but it, it's, the ingredients are nice and simple. It's um, one and two thirds of a cup of distilled water, two tablespoons of aloe vera gel, 16 drops of young Jevedi, lavender and chamomile essential oil blend, one tablespoon of Castile soap, unscented, one tablespoon of young Jevedi Jehovah oil, and then you need a plastic container with a lid that you can cut a hole in or an old wipes container, and a roll of soft paper towels cut in half. And you just cut your paper towels in half, you set aside to be used in another batch. And a plastic container, blend water and aloe vera gel, and then you add your castile soap and your hobo oil to your mixture. You mix well, then you add your essential oils, you blend that well. Place your paper towels in the plastic container, pour liquid over paper towels, rotate to ensure full coverage. Let it sit for five to eight minutes to fully soak in. And then you have your own, paper, your own baby wipes. I thought that was so cool. Okay. Well, that's my talk for tonight. Um, and next, I'll hand you on to Sam. Hi, everyone. Hey. Um, I'm talking about eucalyptus radiata. And it's a great oil. Um, it's an other name that's known as is peppermint eucalyptus. Now, usually um, eucalyptus radiata is mainly used for adults and children with respiratory problems. And so that's really great at this time with COVID because COVID attacks the respiratory. Um, and it's good as a preventative to use rad, uh, eucalyptus radiata with respiratory problems. It's also good in a sick room. So, and with a baby, uh, you could diffuse it, but you need to diffuse it at the other end of the room um, and not use it like it's an oxygen tent over the room. You need to diffuse it at one end of the room. Baby needs to be outside of the room and you need to air it out and then you can bring baby back in and it's good in the air um, also for adults. Um, uh, it's good for fevers. Um, if, but you have to, there's a safety note that you need to be careful around asthmatics because it's known to trigger an asthmatic attack. So if that's the case, then you would um, substitute this oil for cedarwood. Um, eucalyptus radiata is an emotionally uplifting um, and clears the mind and helps aid concentration. Um, it can help as with muscle pain after you've done some activities. Um, most people think it's you only use it for respiratory or breathing issues. Um, eucalyptus uh, radiata is also has lots of other good properties, such as folk can use it for putting in their cleaning products. 
It's got a good clean smell. Um, it can help with mold. Who knew? It helps with mold. It's a preventative. Um, this is for adults and not for children. Uh, it's great for tension headaches. So you'd mix uh, peppermint and lavender um, at the correct dilution rate in a roller bottle. Um, it also can, also one thing I found out with uh, eucalyptus radiata is that it has a shelf life of two years. So if opened, you need to use it. And if it's over two years, then that's the time to put it into your cleaning products because the safety note with this is that if you use it, um, it can um, affect, it'll irritate the skin and your lungs because it starts to oxidize. Uh, also, um, another safety note is if you're using homeopathic remedies, uh, you would use it separate, separately. So you diffuse or wear eucalyptus radiata and then you, at another time, separately, you would um, use your homeopathic um, drops or whatever you're taking. Um, I thought I would just show you before I end my talk. So you've got this little pendant. So there's a, the little pendant. So you could drop on this little pad. So the company sells that along with these little pads and you could drop on your eucalyptus radiator onto this. You drop say three, three to five drops on that. And you could just, I've got this habit of going all day smelling my um, the little pad or the other thing that you could use is in a snifter so you've got your little and what you would do is drop five drops on the top then you would drop that into this part and drop it down and then stick that inside pop your little lid on and then you'd stand it upright when you stand it upright where you popped it on the top there, it just drains down it. And then you can use that to smell. And what a good thing to take around when you're out and about. And especially if you're around anyone with COVID, you can smell your eucalyptus radiata, uh, something to help you ward off COVID. And so that is my little bit for tonight. And I'm gonna pass over to Karen to give her little talk on um, Roast geranium. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> so, um, the last oil in the aroma share for August is the um, roast geranium, which is what I'm going to talk about. Can so, anyway, so it comes in a roll bottle. Oh, All right. Yeah, so this month, it comes, this, the other two have come in a 10 ml bottle. Out, this one comes in a roller bottle, which is very safe for the elderly as well because you can, um, it's easy because it's already diluted. And for the extra fresh fry on the, in young infants, you just use the dilution again to um, dilute it even more if you're going to put it on their feet or use it on them. But anyway, the rose geranium is probably one of my favorite oils that I like to tell people about. Um, it is, it's a dominant oil. Um, it's the most hormonal attitude oil that there is out of all the oils. And for that reason, it's actually not liked by everyone. So you either like it, the smell, or you don't. So it's um, a great oil for easing anxiety and depression, balancing and uplifting, and it provides an energizing um, effect to the mind. So it's going to be that nice and uplifting. And um, it also um, helps to balance adrenals as well. And um, apart from being a skin hormonal um, oil, it's also highly effective um, as an insect repellent, <laughs> including getting rid of um, head loss. And it's also a good deterrent for animals um, as well as insects. And you can put it on your furniture um, without spoiling it, obviously. Um, you can keep pets off the furniture. Mindful around cats again, because cats are very, very sensitive to um, oils and you shouldn't spray around them anyway. But um, going on to rose geranium again, it's, uh, it helps, as well as the adrenal function, it also um, helps stop bleeding if you've got a bleeding nose, okay? Uh, or wounds, and I was listening to um, 
Brenda Wright talking about uh, rose geranium with a bleeding nose, where you can get a drop on a tissue, on two tissues, and put a drop, and then sort of put them up your slightly up your nostril for three minutes, and then you get a drop and you put it on the bridge of your nose, and it's supposed to stop um, bleeding noses and also wounds. Like if you get a cut and it starts to bleed, that bleed. If you put the rose geranium on, it basically also um, instantly stops it, okay, from from bleeding. So that's um, really good to know. And um, you can also use it as a deodorant. Um, Brenda was saying that uh, put it, because um, with the rose geranium oil, when you put it on the bottom of your feet, it actually comes out through your pores. So therefore, you can end up if you're exercising and sweating, you're going to end up smelling this rose geranium. I haven't tried it, so I don't know how much it works. But um, and what else? It's um, it's uh, non-toxic, non irritating but if you do have a bit less sensitive skin, then just try a little patch first. And when it comes to iridology, because Leanne is fabulous for doing iridology with, with the eyes, okay? And even though this oil is great for skin, it's especially great for skin if you um, it's great for skin. Great if you have mixed eyes, okay? It benefits skin issues and kidneys. So this is also one that benefit, benefits mixed eye people and their kidneys. Um, with blue eyes, um, it's, it helps with pancreatic issues, okay? We like for blue eyes, if you want skin issues, you have to go to get black eye laurel and brown eyes. It's uh, neroli, okay? So just really beneficial for those particular eyes. So that's something down the track that we're going to look into because I've always been interested in iridology. And um, this rose geranium also is a, it tones the muscles in the skin. And if you rub it on the area that you want toning, um, it'll start to tone, tone and firm. But that doesn't mean to say that you can't, you shouldn't go out and exercise and tone yourself because <laughs> that's um, you still got to do that. Um, but most of all, and I'm leaving this to last, most of all, the reason I love this product is because it is a woman's best friend when it comes to hot flushes or flashes, whatever you like to call it, okay? I've never experienced it myself, so I can't say, but I had two people, or my, two of my friends have been at my house and had a hot flush, and all they have to do is sniff the bottle and their hot flush goes away totally straight away, okay? So you've got to have just about have it in your bag, have it handy. So you know someone that does get terrible hot flushes and night sweats, they need this, okay? Because this is the one thing I do promote this for. And um, it was actually Joanne uh, Conaway that told us years ago when she first brought out her CDs. So if you get Joanne's CD on hormones, she actually does talk about this, um, about the rose geranium, how it stops hot flushes. So that's the one thing that I will really do, um, really stress it for, if anything else. I swear it will um, stop your hot flushes. I can't go on enough about it. And um, it can also, to balance hormones, it can actually also be mixed with our Clary's Age, okay? And if you've got anxiety, I, I would actually try the same thing for anxiety. If you know someone that's got anxiety, they could also... Um, sniff it and see what happens. As this is a roller bottle, um, I'm not sure, because well, I'm talking about the actual 10 mil bottle for the rose geranium that works. I haven't had anyone try it with the roller bottle. If anything, I would probably rub it on the, put it on their feet, the roller bottle, if that happens, and they happen to have that. And if they do, then you can always, um, as Sam pointed out, we've got our um, those. And Really, that's all I can really say about um, rose geranium because to me that's the most main things that they do um, that they're good for, the um, anxiety, depression, skin, and most of all, your hot flashes. And also, something I keep forgetting to tell people is this essential oil tape, which is uh, Brenda Wright and interviewed by Blake. So that is something that we should all have too, if we're still listening to CDs. <laughs> so um, that is me. Um, on rose geranium, but as I said, go out and get it if you know someone that has hot flushes. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> How brilliant. Yeah, I, I do now and again, especially when I'm embarrassed. Uh, 
So thank you, girls. That's, uh, that was a, an almost a pile of information. Um, I do appreciate the effort that goes into researching all of this for us. Um, so as we continue through with our longevity education, remember, uh, Dr. Wallach, with these new books, with all of the, the CDs and DVDs he has, you know, education is paramount in helping other people overcome health challenges. I'm not always around, Dr. Wallach's not always around, but what is around are these recordings, Dr. Wallach's CDs and DVDs, people from Peter Glidden, Joanne Conway, Ben Fuchs. Lock into these guys, learn as much as you can, and get out there and help people. All I ask from you guys is when you see the success, please come and share it with us. Remember, if you want more educational tools, YGY, sorry, www.tools.ygy90flight.com. Okay, give us a text first, I'll give you a discount code, and you will be able to get a discount from that website. Okay, thanks again. Brings the show to a road. Much appreciated. We'll see you this time next month. Bye for now. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, guys. Thank much, much appreciated. No, thank Thanks for coming on. Don't forget to share the link when the video Bye. comes out. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Bye. 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 Yay. Hi, Rob. How you going? Hey, Kev. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. See you, Kevin. See you, guys. Bye. See you, Rob. Oh.